Caitlin Clark was assaulted yesterday in her very first playoff game in the WNBA. But damn it, in the first two minutes of this game, this Dijonay Carrington stabbed Caitlin Clark with her fingernails right in the eye. We've seen the animus directed at Caitlin Clark all year. It reached a boiling point Yes. In what was supposed to be a significant milestone in Caitlin Clark's career, her WNBA playoff debut took a shocking turn just minutes into the game when she was injured by a seemingly reckless play. Clark, hailed as the rising star in women's basketball and often compared to the legendary Michael Jordan, was unexpectedly assaulted by Dejana Carrington of the Connecticut Sun, who inadvertently poked Clark in the eye during a contested pass. This incident occurred only two minutes into the game, leaving Clark with a swollen eye, disrupted vision, and a derailed performance. The event sent shockwaves, not only through the Indiana fever, but also across the entire basketball community, highlighting the growing animosity Clark has faced throughout the season. This was supposed to be a defining moment for Clark. After an extraordinary college career and an impressive rookie season, all eyes were on her as she stepped onto the playoff stage for the first time. Expectations were sky high. Clark was meant to lead the fever in a competitive series against the more experienced and physical Connecticut Sun. Yet, the dream debut quickly became a nightmare. Clark's game was derailed after the hit from Carrington, which was not called as a foul. The ESPN broadcast barely mentioned it, focusing instead on the game's outcome and the Connecticut Sun's dominant performance. Even ESPN's post thing coverage failed to mention that the league's biggest star had been taken down by what many are calling a dirty play. Clark shot a dismal 4 for 17 from the field, her lowest output of the season, contributing just 11 points in what would become a 93 to 63 blowout loss for the Indiana Fever. For someone who averaged around 20 points per game during the regular season, this was a startling drop in production. The cause? Many believe it was the injury to her eye, a direct result of Carrington's swipe that threw off her vision and disrupted her entire game. The hit wasn't just a physical blow to Clark, it was an emotional and psychological hit for the entire Fever team. Their strategy, meticulously crafted around Clark's unique skill set, was suddenly rendered ineffective, Coach Christy Sides was forced to improvise, adjusting the game plan on the fly as it became evident that Clark was not playing at her usual level. Her signature three-point shots were off target, her normally sharp passes turned into turnovers, and the team's offense stalled without her leading the charge. What makes this situation even more concerning is the history of tension between Clark and Carrington. Earlier in the season, Carrington was seen mocking Clark on the court, engaging in an overly physical style of play that many deemed unnecessary. This rivalry only added fuel to the fire when Carrington's nails struck Clark's eye, leaving many questioning whether the act was truly accidental or part of a larger pattern of animosity directed toward Clark. To say the injury impacted Clark's performance would be an understatement. Her shooting percentage plummeted to 23.5%, a far cry from her usual efficiency. She missed shot after shot, a direct consequence of her impaired vision and likely the pain from her swollen eye. Even her basketball IQ, usually on full display with pinpoint passes and court vision, seemed off as she made uncharacteristic mistakes. What would normally be routine plays for Clark became forced attempts as she struggled to regain her rhythm. It was clear to anyone watching that this was not the same player who had dominated the regular season. Yet, despite all of this, the referees didn't even call a foul. No review was initiated. The game simply moved on, as if the league's biggest star hadn't just been injured on a potentially dangerous play. Fans and analysts alike were left scratching their heads, wondering how such an important moment could be overlooked. In a league where player safety should be paramount, how could the officials miss something so glaring? Clark's injury has sparked broader concerns about the physical nature of the WNBA and whether the league is doing enough to protect its star players. Physical play is a natural part of basketball, 
but when it crosses the line into dangerous territory, it raises serious questions about player safety. For Clark, this wasn't just a minor incident. A black eye might seem inconsequential for a professional athlete, but in a game that requires precision and quick reflexes, an injury like this can significantly impact performance. The WNBA now finds itself at a crossroads. The league has been growing steadily in popularity, with stars like Clark attracting new fans and generating more media attention than ever before. But if incidents like this continue, and if a league doesn't take steps to address player safety, it risks alienating both its players and its fans. It's not just about Clark, either. The WNBA has seen its fair share of physical altercations over the years. Just look at the situation with Brittany Griner, who was suspended for an on-court altercation in the past. The league acted swiftly in that case, but will they do the same here? There's already talk of fines, suspensions, or other disciplinary measures against Carrington. However, any decision the league makes will have far-reaching consequences. If they come down too hard on physical play, they risk watering down the intensity of the game. But if they let too much go, they risk more incidents like what happened to Clark. This balancing act is crucial, not just for the WNBA, but for basketball as a whole. How the league handles this situation could set a precedent for future cases of player safety, not just in women's basketball, but across all levels of the sport. The WNBA has to figure out how to maintain the excitement and intensity that fans love while also ensuring that its players are protected. Beyond the physical aspects of Clark's injury, there's also the mental toll to consider. The Fever entered the playoffs with high hopes, but after losing their star player to an injury just two minutes into the game, their confidence was undoubtedly shaken. Clark herself is known for her mental toughness, her refusal to back down, even when the odds are stacked against her. She didn't leave the game after the injury, continuing to fight through the pain and impaired vision. That kind of determination is what sets the great players apart from the rest. But at what cost? Playing basketball at this level isn't just about physical strength, it's about mental agility, quick decision-making, and sharp instincts. Clark's injury likely affected her ability to judge distances and read the court, crucial skills for a player of her caliber. It's like trying to thread a needle with one eye closed. Every play becomes a challenge, every shot a gamble. The injury threw off her entire game plan, and her teammates were left scrambling to pick up the slack. Kelsey Mitchell and Aaliyah Boston, two of the Fever's other key players, found themselves in the spotlight as the team's strategy shifted away from Clark. They had to step up and fill the void, but the Connecticut Sun had a plan in place. They double-teamed Clark, knowing that even if she wasn't at her best, she was still the focal point of the Fever's offense. This strategy left the Fever struggling to find other scoring options, further contributing to their blowout loss. And then there's the question of race. Some have speculated that Clark, a white player in a predominantly black league, has been targeted more aggressively this season, with players like Carrington, Kennedy Carter, and Angel Reese at the forefront of the physical confrontations. Whether or not there's a racial element to this situation is up for debate, but it's a topic that can't be ignored. The WNBA is one of the most diverse leagues in professional sports, and the dynamics between players of different races and backgrounds can sometimes add an extra layer of complexity to on-court interactions. As the Fever prepare for their next playoff game, all eyes are once again on Clark. Will she be able to bounce back from this injury? Will she even play? If she does, there's a good chance she'll be wearing eye protection, not just for safety, but because the injury could still be affecting her performance. Imagine trying to shoot a three-pointer with your depth perception off. It's like playing basketball underwater. The Connecticut Sun, knowing how crucial Clark is to the fever success, will likely double down on their strategy of pressuring her at every turn. But this could open up opportunities for other players, creating a chess-like game of strategy as both teams try to outmaneuver each other. The Fever's home court advantage could also play a role. Their fans will be out in full force, cheering on their team in what has now become a do-or-die situation. This isn't just another playoff game, 
it's a pivotal moment for the WNBA. How the league responds to Clark's injury will set the tone for the future of the sport. Will they crack down on physical play, enforcing stricter rules to protect players? Or will they allow the intensity of the game to continue, risking more injuries like the one Clark suffered? In the end, this situation is about more than just one player or one game. It's about the future of women's basketball and the direction the WNBA wants to take. Can the league strike the right balance between excitement and safety? Or will incidents like this continue to overshadow the incredible talent on display? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain, how the WNBA handles this will shape the future of the sport for years to come.